Hey, welcome back. My name is Matt Morris. I'm an ITX Advisory Solution Consultant for ServiceNow. And this video is about observability and AI ops for ServiceNow, ITOM, and Azure. So first of all, you know, we've, we've gotten to this point where we have a service map now for our uh, Azure service. We've got the logical grouping here of the resources to help deliver this service. And now what we want to do is we want to take this a step further to be able to see the health of our service and to put alerts in context when they come into the ServiceNow platform, as well as to be able to act on those in an intelligent way, which is ultimately what AI operations is about. So let's talk about how we get this set up. First of all, we have a push connector that is in place for Azure. It's out of the box. Important to note here that the URL parameter value for it is Azure Monitor. We'll be using that in just a moment. We can also look at the event rule that's going to process inbound events called Azure Monitor. I want to make a couple of slight tweaks here for purposes of what we're doing in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the node because we're actually going to do um, a different type of binding. As far as severity, since I'm only going to be sending critical issues over to ServiceNow um, because basically I have it set up where only critical issues, like truly critical things that I really want to tackle are alerting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set severity to one, which is critical. And I actually want to define a manual attribute here for um, the uh, name of what's being affected. And I'm going to drag down the resource name that's coming from the Azure payload. This is important because it's going to allow me to do some custom binding here. I'm going to override default binding. The reason for this is because default binding is for hardware primarily. Um, and if we want to be able to bind to another class, like say a VM, then we need to override that. So we will click override default binding. We'll use CI field matching and we'll bind to CI type of configuration item. What this is essentially saying is that we are going to use the fields that are defined in the alert that's composed. For example, the name field that we brought over to try to match to the name of a field that is on the table of the class that we pick here. So in this case, we have a field called name it's on the configuration item, which will match to the field called name that we're defining in our manual attribute over here. So that will allow us to bind to the VM in the example that we're going to use here. So we'll go ahead and save our event rule changes. And then we need to create a user for this integration. So I'm going to type sys user do into the filter navigator, set up a new user. We will call our user Azure Monitor events and we'll give our user a password go ahead and save and then we just really need to add one role here all of our event roles start with EVT so we have event management integration that's the one that we need for bringing events into ServiceNow from Azure like we're good to go there. Let's jump over to the Azure side, take a look at Azure Monitor. I have a pretty simple configuration here, just really one alert rule um, that I'm actually generating stuff for. It's this VM restart rule. So here I just have a simple rule that's alerting if a VM is restarted, which makes it easy for me to trigger. One thing we do need to do here is we need to uh, set up a new action group to hit our webhook that we just looked at, the push connector. So the resource group here, I'm just going to use the default. Um, the name, we'll call this um, Azure to ServiceNow Events. Notifications, we don't need to do anything here. Actions, we're going to do a webhook and we're going to configure our webhook. Now, the way that we have our webhook configured here is important, so I'll walk through it a little bit. Um, first of all, we are using our username followed by a colon followed by our password here, which I've set to just simply service now, um, followed by our instance name. And then back here we have, we're going to the EM connector um, table. We are sending an inbound event and the source, which is going to decide which connector is going to pick this up is Azure Monitor. We are going to enable the common alert schema. 
because um, that is what our uh, that's what our event rule was looking at. If you saw that a minute ago on the event rule, so we'll go ahead and hit OK, and we need to give our action a name. So we'll say Azure to SN hook. Review and create and create. Now I'm going to go restart a VM, and then we will watch for the events that are coming in off of that in the platform. All right, so coming back over to our service map, we can see that we do have an ongoing event now. This is where an event is fired in against um, our VM. Every cloud has a silver lining. And we can dig into this and take a look at exactly what the details are of what happened. If we look at our related alerts tab on the service details, we'll open up the open alert that we have. You can see that severity did get set to critical, as we were talking about with our event rule where we're setting severity to critical. We can see um, essentially the description that was sent over from Azure here. It was sent as a step four. Um, obviously, we're, we're treating this as a critical. We can see our impacted services. And we can also see uh, the initial event that came in from, um, from Azure Monitor. We can see the details of that, what was sent over, and the, uh, the raw information as well that was sent over from Azure Monitor. Now from here we might say, hey, you know, what do we want to do to resolve this? Because a big key here as we talk about AI ops is to be able to remediate issues as they're happening. We actually have uh, a few management rules that are very simple to configure, um, you know, just a minute or two to configure those. And uh, you, you attach them to a flow, which is just a workflow that's going to walk through some steps to solve, um, you know, a given issue. We have several that, that fired off here, where we say, hey, we want to create an incident on a primary, or potentially create an incident on a non-primary. Since both of those fired, we only actually ended up creating one incident. Um, and then we also fired off a management rule that says, hey, disable a scheduled event. This is kind of a fictional scenario here, where um, we might have like a scheduled event that is restarting um, an always up um, uh, VM, and that was a mistake that that was put in place. And so created a simple action that would go out and disable that scheduled event on the Azure side to prevent this from happening again and to resolve the issue to make sure that, you know, this VM is not going to go down again. So that obviously fired as well automatically. When we look at the details tab, we should be able to see um, you know, some of this progress as it's happening. So this is starting workflow to disable scheduled event that triggered this alert. Yep, and there's our follow-up message that came in saying workflow completed, scheduled event that triggered this event has been disabled. So now at this point, as an operator, I may make a decision to go ahead and close this alert since it looks like the issue is resolved. We'll close that. And we can head back to our service map to see the impact clearing on our service. And there it's clear. And if we go back to operator workspace where it was previously red, we can see that it is now here again as green. All right, so thanks again for your time, and thanks for pairing Azure with the Now platform to make the world of work work better for you.